hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part four of what if naruto was from the two greatest clans remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the new episode of what if naruto was sent to the marvel world and enjoy that and over on anime king 2 i post a new episode of what if Aizuna Uchiha was Naruto's ancestor, so go ahead and enjoy that as well guys. And I also post a new episode of what if Naruto was a smart prodigy, so go ahead and enjoy it as well guys. And remember if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice, and you enjoy the videos on both anime making and anime making too, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime making family. And thank you for all of your help and support guys, and yeah. Without further ado, let's begin this new episode. Start the intro. <laughs> so, the last part we left off, Naruto and Samantha went into the forest as they went to go find the Stark. As Naruto came up on a giant bird nest as he climbed up up there, but he then saw a giant bird coming towards him as he fell off as he hit hard in his hand as he was probably broken. As Samantha quickly pulled him under the tree as a large bird landed on the ground. As she was shaking as she was scared. As Naruto held onto her hand, telling her that it would be alright. And after the bird flew away, they decided to get out of there. But a giant centipede appeared. As it slammed into Samantha, who was trying to protect Naruto, knocking her unconscious. As the thing tried to eat Naruto as it came down on him. As Naruto closed his eyes, thinking that he was going to die. But he remembered about his mother, his father, Samantha, Sasuke, everyone. He could not die. No, he could not, as he snapped his eyes open. As the Sharingan was revealed, also chains break from the ground as they slam right into the centipede knocking him off Naruto. As chains surrounded Naruto's hand as he jumped up, as he dragged on his face brutally on the centipede's head, crashing it into the ground. As Naruto rushed over back over to Samantha, as he picked her up and put her over his shoulder, as he wrapped his broken arm around her, as he used his other arm to climb over the fence, and he came out of the forest. The last thing he saw was people rushing over to him as he collapsed. He woke up in the hospital as his mother and his father was there along with his grandmother as they were happy to see that he was safe as he told them what happened. Meanwhile, Mikoto was hugging her daughter as she was happy that she was alright from what happened in the forest of death as she made her daughter promise to not go back in there unless until she has grown and become a full-fledged ninja that can handle the forest as Samantha promised. We then skipped to Minato as he was talking to the Donzo and the elders and Itachi and Shisui. As Minato wanted to stop the coup, as the Uchiha's believe that just because a uh, Uchiha is in power, they think that they can run the village. But seeing that Minato hasn't given them the rightful power they deserve, they wanted to plan a coup and for the Uchiha's to regain their rightful power. But Minato couldn't allow that, so Shisui's ability was the next plan to do. As he was going to use the ability to control Fukaku to stop all of this. But the next day, Shisui was dead. As Minato was beyond peace. As he threatened Itachi. As he wanted to know what the hell happened. As Itachi told him that Shisui was attacked. That was the last thing he told him. But Itachi said that he didn't find any evidence of his attackers. Even though Itachi knew what is going on. As he had to play both sides to see which one is best for the safety of Konoha and his family. As Minato told Itachi that he will go to the meeting himself, as Itachi didn't find out wise, as he went to Donzo, as Donzo told him that he had to eradicate the clan, because if Minato go to Fukaku right now, Fukaku will just push up the plans, and Donzo said that he would have his root agents wipe out the clan and kill everyone, and there will be chaos in Konoha, because the Uchiha's will fight back against his root agents. As Itachi knew that he had to make a choice. 
As Itachi went that morning and visit Naruto and Sasuke and Samantha at the academy as he saw them playing, as it was recess, as he decided that he knew what to do, there was only one way, so with that he headed off. Later that night, everyone was away from the Uchiha clan, as his mother and his grandmother was out, as his grandmother was healing a woman in the village who has a strange sickness, and Minato got a lot more paperwork, it was like someone was trying to keep him here he thought. As Naruto and the two twins were out, as they were eating ice cream, as Kushina said that she would take them home, as she was bringing them home she noticed the Uchiha clan was dead quiet, as there was a barrier up to keep out sound. So she left them behind and told them to stay as she rushed inside, as she saw bodies all over, as Itachi and the masked man just eradicated the clan. As Kushina saw Itachi standing there with his sword covered in blood, she then heard scream as she turned to see the three kids as Itachi appeared behind her and knocked her out. So yeah guys, that was basically last part we left off. You guys can switch our class to check it out for yourself. So let's start this new episode. We begin this episode with Minato as he was standing on Hokage's monument. He was standing on top of his head on the monument, looking down at the village. His Mongita Sharingan was activated as there was a dangerous aura around him. Because Minato was beyond piss. As he just checked up on his wife and his son and the two twins, as he couldn't believe what Itachi did. As Minato was thinking that he heard things when he got the report, but he found Snavi with an unconscious Kushina and the three kids who passed out. As their minds could not understand the sight that they were seeing, it was too much for them, it traumatized them till they passed out. As Minato couldn't even think about it too much, he just built his rage inside of him. He was beyond piss. As right now, the only sight he see in front of him is killing Itachi for what he did. As he couldn't believe what Itachi did. The entire clan, even his own mother. As Minato thought about the two kids. What nerd to call them, the Sasa twins. A lone tear slipped from his eyes because he was extremely sad. What those kids witness and knowing that when they wake up soon enough they will know that their parents are no more and after seeing their own brother did that. Minato then saw a bird, a black raven bird landed. The bird had a note in its beak as he placed it down. The bird then poofed away. Minato went over as he picked up the note. Minato read the note. As the aura around him intense even more, as he then flashed away. Moments later, Minato arrived deep in the forest of Konoha. As he was standing on a tree branch, suddenly Itachi flashed behind him, a distance away. Smart, said Minato, staying in these regions of Konoha so that we would think that you've gone out of the village and send the search party out there for you. Itachi gulped. As there was two ways of explaining this, he made his decision and he has to explain to Hokage and let him see reason why he did it. Minato then turned towards Itachi as Minato Mangeta Sharingan was already activated. Itachi Mangeta subconsciously activate on his own. Itachi, why did you do it? As he saw Minato clenching his fist, Minato was clenching his fist so tight that blood started to seep from it. Why did you massacre the entire clan? Your mother. Even your father. I told you I would handle this. But you massacre the clan. But I know how powerful you are. Said Minato. As he was talking rather calm. For someone who was rather pissed off. Not even you yourself. Can take on the entire police force. Even if you caught them off guard. Who helped you? I can't. As those words left Itachi's lips, he was sent flying away by a brutal kick as Minato suddenly appeared in front of him. Itachi slammed into a tree as he quickly regained his composure. He picked up himself but Minato appeared in front of him. Minato dragged down his fist as Itachi moved his body as Minato's fist destroyed the tree to splinters. As Itachi jumped back, in a second Minato appeared in front of him again as Itachi could feel it. Minato was not 
joking around he was going for the kill in the attack. As Itachi tilted his head, dodging Minato's fist, Minato brought his hand around and grabbed Itachi's neck as the both of them stared into each other's eyes. The both of them stared there for a second, not doing anything, until Minato went through one-handed hand sign as Itachi pushed away his hand and jumped back. Minato released a large stream of fire that cheered through the forest as Itachi did the same thing while in mid-air as their fire collided creating a huge explosion in the center. As smoke filled the area, as Itachi looked around through the smoke with his Sharingan, but he wasn't fast enough to react when Minato appeared just beneath him. Minato then delivered a powerful uppercut and a spinning kick knocking him back as Itachi smashed into a boulder. Itachi picked up himself as Minato was dashing towards him. Blood leaked from Itachi's eyes. Amaterasu, he said, as he set the ground in front of him to black flames. In a second, a black aura surrounded Minato as he jumped through the Amaterasu flames with his Susanoo around him protecting him. As Itachi wasn't ready for that, as a brutal fist connected with the side of his face knocking him down. Minato then jumped as he landed on Itachi as Minato pulled back his fist but Itachi punched him in the stomach knocking him off of him. As Itachi stood there, he has to explain. He has to tell him the real reason why. Wait Hokage! But Minato wasn't giving him the time to speak as Minato appeared in front of him again and brought down his leg in the ox kick. As Itachi brought up his hand to defend, the ground underneath him exploded as the force behind the kick was so great. Minato delivered up a spinning kick with that, knocking Itachi to the side. Itachi flipped over as he flicked his wrist as two kunai came in his hand as he tossed him towards him. As Minato dodged the both of them, Minato then leaped forward as a black aura appeared around him again as a ribcage appeared while he was in mid-air. Itachi leaped back but a hand extended and grabbed him, a skeleton hand holding him tight. The both of them stared in each other's eyes. As Minato brought the hand down, smashing Itachi in the ground, the hand then pressed down on him, holding him down. As Minato started to apply pressure, Now, tell me, why did you do this? And who helped you? I did it for you and for the village. What? For me and the village, said Minato. I told you my plan. I told you what I was going to do. But yes, till you go against me. That wouldn't work, said Itachi. I know who my father is and how he would react. If he find out that you know about the coup, he would just push the plans. And I had to. I had to for you especially. And why is that? It's because of Donzo, Itachi said. What does Donzo have to do with any of this? He's the one that is behind all of this. This could have stopped a long time ago. If he didn't try to kill Shisui. Hearing that the black aura vanished with a skeleton hand, as Minato stepped back, what are you talking about? Danzo was going to send his Anvus to eradicate the Uchiyas by himself. His Anvus all have a suicide pack, so none of us would know if it was him. Their bodies would burst into flames and leave nothing behind. And he was going to kill all of them. And he didn't want you to sniff in anywhere close to him. So, he was planning on using me, and if I was against it, to kill your son. What? said Minato. That was the argument. He came to with me. He knew that if he was to eradicate the Uchiha clan, he would have his doubts that I would inform you everything if I was against it. So, he was planning on using one of the other root agents to kill your son. Because in that state, you will not be thinking about anything. And trying to find out who was behind the massacre, you will just be mourning your son's death. He would want to drive you into a state where you're not fit to be Hokage anymore. So he could try to overthrow you by using his own envoys, the roots, the plan the coup to take over. He said if I didn't get rid of the clan on my own, he would have sent his envoys to kill everyone and if I had informed you, he would have known. Starting a whole different problem on Konoha and that would just cause many more lives to be lost. So I choose the only way I see out of this. Leaving your son behind alive 
and my brother and sister, but for the rest of the clan. Itachi sit down as he seemed really depressed. Even though he went through with this, it was really hurting him on the inside. As Minato stood there after receiving all that information, so Donzo has been behind all of this. I knew that man never liked me. He hated the fact that Uchiha was ascending to the Hokage seat. Minato then sighed as he sat down as well. I'm sorry, he said. I didn't know what you have to go through. You save my son, your brother and sister, by getting rid of the rest of the clan. And now I can see that's a major stress on you for what you have done. I only want to protect the village and the kids. I understand, said Minato. But Itachi, you're declared as a criminal of Konoha. The news has already spread upon what happened. I know, said Itachi in a very sad tone. Where will you go? I can buy you some time by delaying the search even more. For you to get out of Konoha and far away from the warriors. But where would you go? I already have a place in mind. There's a group called the Akaski, where I will receive aid from. I don't know this group goals yet, but I believe they will become something in the future. And once I'm part of this group, I can also help in ensure that they won't be a threat to Konoha or the other villages. And I was informed a bit about the members that was on it. Orochimaru is one of those members. Huh? said Minato. Yes, Orochimaru. I will ensure that I still do my best to keep the safety of the village. But, can you please watch over my brother and sister? Minato nodded. I have already set up things for them to move into the Senju compound with Naruto and Kushina and Snabby. Thank you, said Itachi. Itachi, tell me the complete layout of Donzo's root base and the current location. What do you plan to do? asked Itachi. For what that man has done, it has gone too far. I have overlooked a lot of things. That man even tried to kill Sarutobi in the past by using Kakashi when Kakashi was in a bad state until I pulled him out of it. And that man has been roaming around, seeming to be a good elder, but he's nothing but a nuisance in this village and he need to get rid of. What about the root? asked Itachi. Either they fall under my control, or they be eliminated as well. Time skip. Two days later, Naruto slowly opened his eyes. After what happened, the three kids went into a state where Snabby didn't want to pull them from because their mind was fragile. After seeing so much, it corrupted them. It traumatized their mind just a bit. And she didn't want to pull them from that comatose state. So she believed it was just good to give them time to rest and recover on their own. And that is finally wearing off as Naruto slowly opened his eyes. For a second, he didn't remember anything. Until he did. As he looked around, he was in his room in the Senju compound. As he got up off the bed. As the flashes. As he remembered everything that Itachi said, that he was doing all of this to test the limit of his power, that he wasn't what he seems. He was not the kind, gentle older brother that was all a lie. Nurta clenched his fist tight as he got up off the bed, as he still couldn't understand why would Itachi do something like this. As he exited his room, as he was wearing a white shirt and shorts. As he started to walk down the hall, he then noticed one of the rooms that wasn't ever used. There was a lot of rooms in the Senju compound. He noticed not even one, two of them. Seemed like someone was in there. As he noticed the doors slightly cracked open, like someone had came and gone. As Naruto reached towards the first one and opened it, as he went inside to see Sasuke lying down on the bed, as Sasuke was sleeping soundly. As Naruto remember, after what happened, they had to stay here. They couldn't just go back to the Uchiha compound like that. Not after witnessing that. As the memories still haunt him. And for it to be their own brother, it must be worse on them. 
Samantha he thought, as he went out of the room and checked the other one, as he saw Samantha inside, but she wasn't asleep, she was awake. As her eyes were open, tears streaming down the side of her face, but the way she was lying down on the bed, people would think that she was sleeping, but Naruto could hear the small sobs. As Naruto walked closer, Samantha noticed him as she turned towards him. She then turned back as she looked back at the ceiling, as she still continued to cry. Naruto walked over as he just sat down, as he didn't know what to say in this situation, as he didn't know how, what to do. He wasn't that intact with people feelings, he was still just a kid. He then heard footsteps, as he turned to see his mother enter the room. Mom, Naruto said, Naruto you're awake, as she didn't notice Samantha crying. Kushina quickly rushed over as Naruto noticed tear lines on his mother's cheeks going down. She has been crying as well as she rushed over and grabbed Samantha and hugged her. As Samantha hugged back his mother and started crying in her shoulders. As Naruto remembered that his mother and Mikato was close friends. After what Itachi did, he understand why his mother was sad and he was angry. All of that anger went towards Itachi, as he still couldn't understand why did Itachi do that. Meanwhile, Sasuke slowly opened his eyes. For a second, just a second there Sasuke didn't remember what happened. But when he did, pure anger started to show on his face. As his eyes flicker for a second showing the one totem Sharingan. As Sasuke didn't feel like crying, he was angry. He was angry beyond disbelief. His brother, he loved his brother so much. And after hearing those cold, un ungiving words from his brother mouth, saying that he did this to test his limit, he killed all of them just to see how strong he was. Sasuke didn't feel like crying, he didn't feel like being sad. He didn't know when it happened, but a part of him just shut down and it was replaced with pure, unbridled anger and rage. Time skip. Two days later, Minato was currently in the office with Snavi. As Jiraiya appeared at the window as he came inside, Jiraiya got the report. As for once, he wasn't smiling, he had a serious look on his face. Let's get down to business, Jiraiya said. We're waiting for the old man, said Minato. As he was sitting down in his chair, as he wasn't smiling either, he was serious, dead serious. There was a knock on the door. Come in, said Minato. As Saratobi entered the room, as Saratobi heard what happened, as he too was also sad at the loss of all of those Uchiyas, some of them being innocent people. He wanted to talk to Minato about the cause behind this and the reason, but Minato told him that they will talk once Jure and Snadi are here. Minato activated a silence seal once all three of them got inside. We're here to talk about the recent events with Itachi Uchiha. What could have caused that boy to do all of this? Said Snavi. He was forced. He had no choice, said Minato. What do you mean? Asked Jiraiya. I talked to Itachi recently. What? You talked to him? Yes. As I have discussed with you all, the Uchiha's doesn't like that I am a Uchiha and they doesn't have full power in the village. I tried to sort it out a long time ago, but all I've done is fail. This is not on you Minato, said Snavi. They just wouldn't listen. And look what happened now. Itachi was forced, don't be mistaken, by Danzo, said Minato, surprising them. By Danzo, said Saratobe, as he knew that man didn't like the Uchiha's, but to go this far, to make this happen. What did he do exactly? asked Jiraiya. Minato was forced to pick between this village, his brother and sister, and Naruto. A dangerous look came on Snadi's face. As all of that just sank in, what does Naruto have to do with any of this? What does the kids have to do with any of this? Donzo threatened them. Donzo still have his route, running in secrets. But I thought you shut that down a long time ago, said Jerry as he looked towards Saratobi. 
I knew that he was up to something, but I never thought that he would reinstate all of his roots. Yes, he did, said Minato. And now, he threatened my son, and he touched his brother and sister. He told him that he would wipe out the clan with his roots. Itachi had no choice but to pick one state because he knew if battles happen, there will be a civil war in Konoha. Danzo was going to try and kill Naruto to cause me discomfort. So, in my mistaken state, he can take the title as Okage. Snabe instantly stood up. Haim, where are you going? asked Jiraiya. I'm going to find that old cripple and kill him. Tsunade, calm down. What do you mean calm down, she said as she looked towards Minato. He threatened your son. You really think I'm going to leave him like that? I don't intend to. As all of them looked towards Minato, this man has done the unspeakable. He deserved to die. That is why I call you here, Jiraiya. He has a lot of root agents under there. Tsunade, I will be needing your assistance as well. The three of us, with three others, are going to be taking out all of his envoys that does not give up and taking him out himself. That man deserves no second chance, no redemption, nothing, just execution. Minato then turned towards Saratobi. I called you here so I can tell you this. I know you're the past Okage and all that, but if you go against my plan, if you do not agree with it, it doesn't matter. I will still fulfill my plan. We have allowed that man to roam and do as he please for a long time now. And I'm just telling you that he will die, said Minato in a very serious tone. Saratobi looked at Minato as Saratobi knew the man that Donzo was when they were younger. They were friends. But since then he has become a corrupted dark dark person and Sir Toby just gave Minato a nod I'm with you 100% he said where exactly is his base located asked Jiraiya Minato has given me a fully description layout he has even write it down in a map for me what about Itachi asked Sir Toby what will the poor boy do he's getting assistance from a group called the Akaski it's a group made up from s rank missing names, such as Orochimaru. Orochimaru said Sartobi. Yes, that is why with Itachi on the inside, he will grow closer to this group and find out their future agendas. So we can squash it if it becomes anything too dangerous for the village or for the world. Because having s rank criminals like that, someone must be there to be stronger, to hold the authority over all of them. And we don't quite know who it is yet. Snad didn't care about that. She wanted to know when will this raid happen? When will this attack take place? She asks. As that old crippled bastard must pay for what he did. A day later, it was 12 o'clock in the night. It was dead at night as the village was calm. Everyone, mostly in the village, were asleep. As the rest of the people were at home, just relaxing. No one is walking on the road. In the forest, we have six people dashing through with incredible speed. As one of them stopped and did a hand signal, the other one landed on the ground gently. He went through hand sign, earth style, earth chasm he said, as the earth lowered itself inside until it separated. As the earth opened up showing a passageway inside, the other five then flashed towards his side. As the six of them entered. Meanwhile, Donzo was currently inside of his base. Things has been going well, as he knew that that boy would never tell the Hokage any information about what happened because he knew that his brother and sister are in the village and he can easily get to them and punish him for harming them so he wouldn't dare reveal any of this to the Hokage. But it would just be soon. Soon enough he will find a way to break that man. Right now he can't do anything against his son. As there been a protective security around the other two kids. And therefore his son as well because he's always there. They're currently at the central compound. And he couldn't go into that place. There was a security seal around it. 
that avoid people that are not recognized not get in. His route on Boost try to bypass the barrier, but they could not. As the other two kids were up there, as they were probably going through a lot right now, but Donzo wouldn't kill them because he would prove to be a great asset in rebuilding the Uchiha clan in the future. And also, the fourth son, he would be a great asset as well because him being from the Senju and Uchiha descendants, that was a great power impact which he wanted to be under his control. But he had no doubt that his father and his mother and his grandmother would stand in his way. That is something that he has to get rid of before he try to take the boy. If that boy could become one of his roots and be trained personally by him, there is no telling how far he can make him go. But those two are not pushing him through the harsh training, they are just holding him back. Donzo then felt that explosion rot the entire place, snapping him from his thoughts. Suddenly, an Anvu flashed beside him. Sir, we have been, but the Anvu couldn't get to finish that sentence. As a large sword made from pure black energy drives straight through the ceiling coming down. As Donzo quickly jumped from his chair and landed over to the side, a gaping hole could be shown from upwards. As Donzo heard battling going on, suddenly someone descended down. They were wearing a black cloak. As Donzo heard massive explosions above him, how were they able to sneak in like this? Who are you? Donzo said. The man slowly reached up and removed the cloak. As Donzo stood there shocked, as he never thought this would happen. Hokage, he said. Don't Hokage me, said Minato. As he stood there, his Mongita Sharingan activated, a pissed off look on his face. I know what you did, Donzo. You, you're responsible for so many deaths. You claim to want to protect Konoha, but you just eradicate a great portion of it, which I could have done something to stop. You foolish, naive Hokage, said Donzo. Now knowing that his cover was blown, he could just let out his true thoughts. You really think that you, someone like you could have stopped this? You have no idea what it means to truly be a leader. You're just a naive boy. That old damn idiot Sir Toby gave the title because he thought that you were best for this village, which you're not. It doesn't matter what you say, Donzo. You will never have this title. Huh. Well... If I take your life, perhaps I will get it in return, said Donzo. And that's another thing you're naive and stupid about. That will never happen because... Because what Donzo said? Tonight I end your life. Bowl, are we, Hokage, said Donzo. But on the inside, Donzo was fretting, as he didn't have enough time, as he wanted to remove this gauntlet of his arm, and also the Sharingan. But the roof above him exploded again. This time someone came rocketing down. The purse hit the floor with a boom. Creaked a large crater. As Donzo saw bodies of his root agents flying. Coming from the hole above. And smashing into the wall. And stomping down into the ground. As Donzo saw the images. As he saw Jiraiya. He saw Kakashi. He saw Tenzo. The Anfu with the wood style. He also saw another Anfu. As she was one of the Hokage's main guard, as she had long purple hair, as they were going through his root agents like they were nothing. As Jiraiya was the main power force, blowing away a great portion of them. Snadi had a dangerous glare on her face. Her entire body was swirling with chakra as pure rage was inside of her. She looked towards a man. It doesn't matter what happened tonight. You will die, old man, she said to him. As Donzo looked behind him, Minato was gone. Before Donzo could even react, a solid kick connected with his face as it dragged him down into the ground. Suddenly, two Anvus leaped forward, root agents. As they had their sword in their hand, they brought it down to stab on Minato. But the ribcage appeared around him as their swords break apart. Two Susanoo hands appeared and grabbed them. Minato wasn't holding anything back as he squashed them as blood rained down. 
as Natty turned her attention towards Donzo. She stepped forward as the ground cracked under the weight, as the amount of chakra leaking off of her was something different. As Donzo felt true fear, he quickly brought his hands up as he was about to rip away the bandages as he had to use a Sharingan if he was going to win in this battle. But he couldn't get to do that as Kakashi leaped from above seeing Donzo reach up to remove that bandage on his eye as Minato already discussed with them that Donzo has a lot of secrets and they should watch out for anything. As Kakashi tossed a kunai as Donzo had to jump away as he was foolish to do that. He should have probably taken a stab in his armor or something because he backed right into Snaddy as a fist slammed into his back. The moment it did, multiple snaps were heard as Donzo was sent skyrocketing towards the wall as he made a solid imprint in it. Minato didn't even wait a second. This man tried to hurt his child, damage his family. As the rib cage emerged around him again, but this time it built the top half of a Susano. As Minato's top half had a gauntlet on his head, as it had red, red crimson eyes that seemed to shine in the darkness. It had strange spikes all over his head, running down to his shoulders and his arms. It had red streaks running all over like a pattern all over his dark body. The war above was even getting hotter and hotter. As Jiraiya and the rest of them were stopping the Andus from going below, so Minato and Snaddy could deal with that as Kakashi went back up to stop them from getting down here. Donzo coughed up some blood as he tried to turn around. As he came face to face with a giant, Susanoo above him, looking down at him dangerously. As Donzo saw his entire life flash in front of his eyes, as he realized what a waste it has been. All that he has done to try and become Okagi. But none of it worked, as he realized he has done nothing but fail. That was the only thing he had to think, as the swords came down on him in a brutal fashion, as the entire place exploded, releasing a massive boom. Meanwhile, on the surface, the entire ground shook in the forest, as trees were rooted up, as smoke emerged from the ground. Because of the force behind Minato's swing and the power as the explosion was massive. And thus is the end of Donzo Shimura. Time skip. Two years later. We currently have Naruto walking through the village. Things has been, well, different. Usually, he used to hang out with Sasuke and his sister. All of them having fun. But from what happened, all of them were forced to grow up. Well, basically those two were forced even faster than him. He still had his family. And that made him feel very sad for them. They have been living at the Senju compound. He tried his best to be there for the both of them. But he knew things. Not everything. He couldn't fix everything. It doesn't matter if he tried to make a joke. Or tried to cheer them up. They would still resort back to that sad, gloomy state. And he did not fault them because he understood. He was also still angry. He was livid for what Itachi did. As he learned how to hate that man. He never hated anyone in his life but he hate Itachi badly. As he still couldn't understand why would Itachi do that to his own mother and father. And leave his siblings behind like that in such a broken state. As even at the academy they have changed. They have not really spoken to anyone besides Naruto. And when they talk to him, he can see it. They talk with a manner like it was hard for them to find any hope anymore. But it doesn't matter. Naruto would be there for them. He wants to get them back on right terms. He know it might take long, but he will get them back on good terms. They will be best friends again. And he will pull them out of this gloomy state. Right now, he was on his way to meet Jiraiya. Jiraiya was currently in the village. As Naruto has been getting his training from his mother and father. As Sasuke and Samantha has been tagging along as well. The both of them has been pushing yourself extreme. As Naruto knows that the both of them had a pact to do something. Which they didn't tell him about. Because they have been training hard. Intensely even at night. They get stronger. As Naruto have a feeling that they want to get revenge on Itachi. For what he did. 
but he knew that this would just push them down a dark path, which he didn't want. But they were still pushing themselves, as the both of them had their Sharingan with their two totem inside of it, after their training. Naruto also had the two totem Sharingan as well. He trained hard as well, but they seemed like they want to kill themselves, because even at late at night, even when they're tired and sleepy, they still kept on training. Most of the time he find them asleep on the training field. He just wished that he could be there more for them. Perhaps these years will get him on a better term with them. Naruto then finally found Jiraiya. Ah, kid, you're finally here, said Jiraiya. As he was currently sitting down, he was in a training field as he was going through his book, writing on a lot of things, and a few pervert giggle here and there. Hey, what are you writing in that book, Naruto said. You always been writing, as Naruto tried to look in it, but Jiraiya quickly closed it. I can't show you that. If your mother ever finds out, she would kill me. Is it that bad, said Naruto. Oh, it's nothing bad. It's actually something great. You should... He stopped himself. What am I talking about? Well, kid, you told your father that you want to see me. You wouldn't even tell him what it's about. Well, I want you to train me, said Naruto. Huh? I thought your mother and father had that. Yeah, but they aren't teaching me the serious things. They still think of me as a kid and won't teach me anything too dangerous. That is why I called you. My dad won't even teach me the Rasengan. He said I have to wait to get a bit older. But he said that he was going to teach it to me before I get out of the academy. But that's not that far away, kid, said Jaraya. It is, Nerta said. Can you help me out a bit? Please, Nerta said. As he gave Jaraya puppy dog eyes. Oh, come on, kid, don't do that to me, said Jaraya. Please, Nerta said. All right, fine. I'll teach you in secret. But you can't let your mother or father find out. They will be angry at me for going behind your back. And you must not use it in front of them until you're ready. I will, Nerta said. But before that, can you show me how you summon toads? Huh? You want to sign the toad contract, Jaraya said. Well, I was going to give it to you when you were a bit older. I suppose there isn't any problem in with you signing it now. Oh, so you want to see how I summon toads? Alright then. Stand back a bit, he said. As he bit his finger and went through hand sign. Summoning jutsu, he said. As he was a poof. As Naruto waited for the smoke to clear, as he saw Jiraiya standing on top of a medium-sized toad. Wow! Incredible! If I have this, toads can really help in protecting my friends. Hey, Jiraiya, why have you called me? Oh, well, just for a demonstration. Demonstration, the toad said. Well, I was going to allow this kid to sign the summoning contract, and he wanted to see how I summon toads. That kid? The toad looked down. As the toad saw Naruto biting his finger and going through hand sign. Hey boy, what is he doing? Jiraiya looked down. Naruto, stop! There is no telling what will happen if you do that without signing the contract. But Naruto did a totally different set of hand signs. Well, he was trying to mimic Jiraiya's hand signs, but he got a few wrong. As Naruto slammed his hand on the ground, summoning Jutsu, he said. But instead of summoning anything, Naruto poofed away. As Jiraiya looked around, where the hell did he go, he said. Meanwhile, Naruto found himself on a grassy, soft field. As he got up, what happened, he said as he looked around. Where am I? As he looked around to find out where the hell he was, but he just saw miles and miles of field. Naruto then heard something as he turned. His eyes went wide to what he saw coming towards him. But guys, let me end this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn that bell notification as they posted. Remember, cheers to all of your friends, your social media platform. But I'm all for now. Peace.